let's imagine for a moment that this toy represents the world and those little yellow shapes are unique individuals. So what are the holes? Perhaps they're colleges aspired to or maybe something else. But this is a game that we all must play and it starts at a very young age. As a high school administrator, I have noticed an obsession with adults asking young people these questions. Where will you go to college? What do you want to study? And it starts young, as early as middle school and increasingly into high school. They, this, these well-intentioned questions are often causing unintentional stress for young people who may not have the tools or knowledge to know exactly where they want to go or what they want to be someday. Michelle Obama shared that her decision to become a lawyer was one that seemed to make adults happy. And that's part of why she made that choice. And I've noticed young people make a decision to make us happy. How many of you know someone in this situation changing majors, not getting a degree necessarily helpful in their work, or not enjoying their job. This happens with young people. Maybe that four-year degree takes five years or six years, or maybe there's no degree earned at all. About a quarter of students finish in four years, a four-year degree. This is a challenge in society today. Then they have to move on and get a job. And maybe that job isn't quite what they thought that college degree would earn them. Then what? The monthly payments on loans and wondering what next? So what we see is student debt is part of the equation and a workforce gap and job dissatisfaction. This is a challenge that we must own. Right now, student debt is something that a lot of you may have experienced or know someone that is still experiencing. What is this impact on our society when you look at these statistics? One in four adults has student debt they carry. And one in three millennials say they can't become independent right now because of this. Employers are saying that they can't find employees with the skills that they need for in-demand jobs, and that gap is growing. A college degree is not necessarily direct preparation for the workforce's needs. And sometimes college graduates end up taking work that has them left underemployed. About half of you in this room may not be satisfied with your work at this time. That bleeds over into other areas of life and your overall sense of happiness. Our rhetoric of pushing a four-year degree for every student in anything is no longer the solution. Education is core to the success of the workforce and our young people, but there's more to that equation. Our first goal is looking at a new solution of helping students to identify their purpose in life, their ikigai, and helping provide experiences to reinforce that that is the path that they should be on. And education plays a key role, the right amount of education for their goal. Ikigai is a Japanese concept that means your reason for being. And the old advice of just doing what you love is no longer enough. We must now look at several areas on this beautiful chart, such as considering what you're good at, what the world needs, and what you can be paid for. That overlap of passion, mission, profession, and vocation provides the sweet spot of ikigai in the center. The young people need help to find this, though. It's a journey. This graphic illustrates one of the challenges in finding one's path. The red 86% shows interest-based selections of careers students might want to pursue. A lot of those are in the social and artistic fields, such as entertainment or education, social work, life sciences, things students know well from their life experiences up until this point. 26% of them demonstrate aptitude in those areas, meaning those are things that they're suited for, that they would be good at. 
On the other side, we notice in the blue, the high economic demand fields such as engineering, computer technology, manufacturing, transportation and logistics, the student interest in these fields is much, much lower, maybe because they're not aware of what those jobs are or if they would be suited. However, the data with this particular sample said 56% of students had aptitude in those areas, but they might not know what that is. That's the tricky part. This graphic is from a company called U-Science that's been working with us at Dublin City Schools to help our students to identify their areas of strength, their aptitude, and their interests. And it uses an algorithm that helps to tell students um, their unique data set, how it aligns with over 600 jobs in the workforce. And it drills down into each of those careers to help students understand what those jobs look like and why their strengths would be useful in those different careers. This is the kind of data science that we can use in education to help students make good choices when they're planning out what their path might look like. And it might open them up to fields they otherwise wouldn't have considered or known about or understood prior. Students need experiences as well, if you remember that equation from the other slide. Dublin City Schools gave me the opportunity to open a new kind of learning facility in our district for high school students called Emerald Campus. Emerald Campus engages students in career academies to help them discover if uh, a certain field is a good fit for them or maybe not. Both those pieces of information are equally valuable in a young person's journey to discovering their icky guy. As you can see in these pictures, these were all just from one week when I was putting my slides together. A lot was happening in the building. We bring in guest speakers on a regular basis in all of the programs. We have a speaker series of professionals from the community that come in to talk to students about what it is exactly they do and advice they might have for them. We have hundreds of students participating in internships in our community to figure out what that work looks like and if it's really what they thought it would be when they identified it as an area of interest. Emerald Campus continues to grow as more and more students find out how fun it can be figuring out the things you're good at and what you love doing and what that can lead to. Because after all, education, it is key to this equation of figuring out one's purpose. I've yet to meet a parent who doesn't want their child to be independent and successful as an adult. That they want them they want what's best for them. But the challenge is sometimes, as, a, as parents, we don't know everything that's out there for our children. And the path has changed to success. It's not just that four-year degree. There's more to that. So guiding our children can be a challenge. We see that parents want what's best, and they might push their children to take as many advanced courses as possible. And Get that GPA as high as you can to get into that best school. That four-year degree and that best school might be the best thing for that child, and there might be more of that college education in their future, or it could look differently. It could be a combination of, of different opportunities, learning opportunities, and it could be discovering what they're interested in first before going on that journey of rigorous coursework. One example I wanted to share is of my husband. When he was in high school, a long time ago, he was seen as someone who was college material. I should use air quotes on that. Meaning, his only option was you're going to college and you're gonna be successful because of that. So he did, went to Ohio State, then after five years decided, I still don't know what I wanna do, I think I'll just go to law school because I can. And my father did it, so why not? That's what we do, we, we just get more education, went to law school, hated it. It was not the experience he had hoped for. And he graduated, passed the bar, tried some things and found it just really wasn't his passion. And so he ended up staying home with our children, which was fantastic for our family, but he was still looking for that purpose. And so he started remodeling our homes and interestingly taught himself through YouTube videos and books how to do electrical and drywall and plumbing and um, some things that were really advanced with construction. You can learn a lot from the internet these days. But he discovered he loved that. 
And if he had had the experience when he was younger, exposing him to those opportunities, there would have been lots of things he could have chosen from that would have looked differently. And we wouldn't have that student debt we're still paying on from law school after all these years. Each young person deserves to live their purpose and find their ikigai. To our community, I would urge you to consider finding ways to welcome young people into your office or boardroom or cubicle or warehouse, your place of work. How can we help young people see what it is that's out there that they can do? To young people, I would encourage you to figure out what is your passion and what are your strengths and how do those align with the careers that are in demand in our world right now? And consider encouraging your friends as well. Let's not judge what people choose to do. And to parents, keep an open mind. There is no one right way to be successful. Greatness is not limited to any one profession. Encourage your children to pursue what they're passionate about and what they're good at, and find ways to help them connect with those experiences that can tell them and confirm if it's their true path. Together, we can help people explore what they can do to find their ikigai, to live their purpose, and hopefully change the world.